over the last few months we have done uh, great progress. Uh, we have finalized the painting inside the tunnel quite recently. We have also finished the, tunnel, the drilling and the installation of the tunnel supports. The deluge system, we have installed uh, everything inside the excavator tunnel and in the second tunnel with the deluge system we are about 50%. All of the jet fans are already on the sea. We have received uh, 10 and we have installed the first one. Contrary to what most people think, the jet fans work by slowing down the air inside the tunnel. Basically, keep the air inside the tunnel at a speed that can be taken out by the fans inside the buildings through the shafts. The bent buildings are a critical part of the security of the tunnel because so all the power to the tunnels is coming through the buildings. So for anything to work, we need those buildings. Now I'm here in the uh, plenum of the Southern Bent building, uh, which is uh, where the tunnel fumes and exhausts will be uh, brought through. Just behind me is the uh, tunnel entrance for the southbound tunnel. We're on sub-level one of the ventilation building, which is made up of five levels. We're at the other end of this, uh, this large area is four uh, big ventilation fans which will be drawing the air out of the tunnel and up out the ventilation stack. So the southern ventilation building is the uh, home to the deluge system which has five large water tanks um, and all the fire pumps which will supply all the deluge to the sprinkler heads throughout the tunnel and through the southern vent and northern ventilation buildings. Uh, it's all supplied from one end. The water supply to the large tanks is from the town supply, main supply. It's pumped into the storage tanks, which are there to release a massive amount of water at one point of time. So we have five tanks to cover the whole tunnel. So there's three uh, diesel powered uh, pumps for the deluge system, so that if we do lose power, the diesel generators will still run the pumps, regardless if there's power or not. The deluge pipes run down the roof of the tunnel, uh, both in both tunnels, and from there they tee off into each of the cross passages uh, to supply all the areas. And also uh, there's connection points in there for the fire brigade and other services, emergency services. The southern and the northern ventilation buildings are exactly the same as each other, uh, except for the deluge system, which is all stored in the southern ventilation building. The electrical system is uh, separate as well for the incoming supplies. In the south, we have a 22,000 volt feed, which comes from Avondale power station. And from the northern vent building, we have a 22,000 volt power supply, which comes from Te Aritu. So we have two power stations supplying each end of the tunnel. Um, to prevent, if we lose part of Auckland, a different part of Auckland will still supply big tunnel. We also have a link between the northern and the southern uh, buildings to connect that 22 kV as well in both tunnels. So effectively we'd have to lose two power stations in Auckland to lose power at this, um, at this building. So once the 22,000 volt comes into the building, it then goes through some transformers. Uh, there's four transformers in each building and we reduce from 22,000 volts down to 690 volts and 415 volts. The 690 volts is for the jet fans and the ventilation, and the 415 volts is for all our uh, lights and general power for everything. Uh, from there, we've got four main switchboards in each building, and that delegates off to um, different areas. And from here, we also supply the power to the first half of both tunnels for the cross passages, uh, which then in turn supplies all the lighting and communication inside the tunnel. The power for the tunnel and the cross passages runs from the middle floor of the vent buildings, it goes down through to the culverts, which is a small tunnel within the tunnel, uh, underneath the road. it comes through into the bottom of the cross passages and is, uh, goes to distribution panels. 
we have a UPS backup system here as well. So the UPS is so that if we do happen to have worst case scenario and lose the power stations, uh, we've got a UPS battery backup which will still run all the emergency lights uh, and sensors, monitoring equipment, alarms and everything so that people can safely evacuate. We have a team of guys who are assembling all the LED lights, fittings, uh, there's about four and a half thousand of these to be installed in the, in the tunnel. Uh, we also have all the PA system and the camera, CCTV cameras in this area, uh, which are for radio broadcast through the tunnel. The tunnels are changing rapidly, uh, every time you go in there you can see huge amounts of improvements. The paving's going down, the lights are going up, all the finishing touches are starting to happen now. So I'm really pleased with uh, how everything is going here. It's uh, been completed to an extremely high standard. We've bought through uh, quite a few apprentices that have uh, really stepped up and learnt a lot of skills here. And we've done a lot of training with the whole team uh, to upskill everybody and uh, create a, a really good project and uh, some really top quality work. I'm really happy, especially with the way the team is performing. We are performing beyond what everyone was expecting us to perform. I think it's the Alliance model that has allowed us to work as one team, doing basically what is best for project rather than just what's best for my team. And I think that has allowed the project to save quite some time in the overall program. 